Welcome to the beginning of our genetic engineering series. In this series, we will delve into various concepts, methods, and mechanisms for editing, manipulating, and engineering genes and genomes. During the late 1950s and up until late 1960s, after the structure of DNA had been discovered, numerous fundamental discoveries were made. We gained insights into many essential enzymes that form the foundation of genetic engineering, such as ligases, polymerases, kinases, and more. Additionally, scientists also uncovered the existence of plasmid during this period. However, despite this expanding knowledge, a significant problem existed. There was no reliable method to precisely and reproducibly cut DNA at specific locations. This changed in late 1967 with the discovery of EcoK1 and HIND1, the first two restriction enzymes. These two enzymes were practically useless, but subsequent research led to the discovery of more promising candidates. HIND2 emerged as one of the earliest genuinely useful restriction enzymes. This breakthrough paved the way for identification of numerous valuable restriction enzymes, and today we have knowledge of over 3,000 such enzymes. In the early 1970s, another pivotal enzyme, reverse transcriptase, was discovered. This marked the beginning of a revolution that opened up the field of applied molecular biology, enabling gene cloning and genetic engineering. Fast forward to today, we possess the capabilities to manipulate entire genomes and modify organisms through advanced methods like CRISPR-Cas9. Let's break down genetic engineering into two distinct eras for the sake of simplicity. Classic genetic engineering and contemporary or modern genetic engineering. Classic genetic engineering operates on a smaller scale, primarily involving gene-level manipulations conducted outside of the cell. On the other hand, modern methods empower you to modify DNA at a genome level within a cell. It is important to recognize that modern genetic engineering builds upon the foundation principles of classic genetic engineering. You might also come across the term genetic engineering referred to as recombinant DNA technology. However, I personally find genetic engineering to be more descriptive and fitting term for this field. So what can you expect from this series? Let's break it down step by step. We will begin with the basics, diving into essential tools like restriction enzymes. We will explore the various types of these enzymes, how they operate, their sensitivities, and scenarios when they might not work as expected. Within this toolkit, we will also touch upon related enzymes you might already be familiar with. Our discussion will then shift towards vectors, often represented as these circular things. We will explore plasmids, yaks, backs, cosmids, phagemids, and other variations. This naturally leads us to the concept of molecular cloning. This is different from organism cloning. Molecular cloning focuses on how to make copies of DNA segment at a molecular and gene level. Think of methods like Golden Gate cloning and Topo TA cloning. Once we have cloned DNA, especially a functional gene, our attention then turns to the production of proteins. So we will delve into topics such as promoters, cDNAs, codon optimization, and purification tags. After building a solid foundation in gene-level genetic engineering, we will transition into the realm of genome scale engineering. Here we will touch on meganucleases and zinc finger nucleases, unique enzymes which are derived from specific type of restriction enzymes. We will also explore tailings, which belong to the similar category of methods. Over the past decade, CRISPR-Cas9 has taken the center stage, even winning the 2020 Chemistry Nobel Prize. There will be a few deep dive videos on CRISPR. Since CRISPR, other powerful tools like base editing, paste, prime editing, and argonaut endos have also come out, so I will discuss them as well. All of these methods are designed for engineering DNA within a cell. As we venture into genomic manipulation, we will need to understand DNA repair pathways, including homology repair and end joining. These mechanisms play a crucial role in the precise engineering of genomes. Both styles of genetic engineering discussed here involve introducing DNA into a cell. The methods for achieving this vary depending on the type of organism you're working with. For bacteria, specific techniques are used. When working with mammalian cell culture in a dish, different methods come into play. In the realm of plant genetics, the gene gun has been a prominent tool for some time and it continues to be used. 
Electric shocks are another powerful way to deliver DNA. Viruses provide another method to DNA transfer. And for those familiar with in vitro fertilization, you're aware that DNA can be directly injected into the cells. These are just a few examples, and there are numerous other methods available. In this series, we will explore many of these techniques in detail. Towards the end of this series, our focus will shift towards large-scale mutagenesis. This involves the use of transposons like piggybacks, Sleeping Beauty, and others. Recombinase technologies like tree lock speed and flip systems, as well as interference mechanism like RNAi, are also quite useful for mutagenesis. More recently, CRISPR has also made its way into the interference realm, so that's on our agenda as well. If all goes well, we might even explore the design and principles of gene therapies and organism cloning. There's a lengthy list of additional topics that could potentially find a place in this series, but those are yet to be decided. If you have any suggestions, feel free to share them in the comments below. In any case, my grand goal is to lay a solid foundation starting with basic molecular cloning and progress towards more advanced and intricate genetic engineering methods. I hope you're excited for this series, and I will see you in the next video on restriction enzymes.